You may have been wondering how filtering works when using Calculate and DAX. In this video, I'm going to spell out how you can use different kinds of filters. Filters that have a single condition, multiple conditions, what things to look out for, and what you can do to actually master the Calculate function in its regards to filters. Let's jump right in and see what examples I mean. So when we focus on filtering in Calculate, it's meant so that we can make our calculations easy and don't have to replicate code. On my screen, we're looking here at a table that shows the sales amount per color in our database. So these, uh, if you look at over here, then if you take a color like, for example, blue, then the sales amount for all the blue color products is 928. If we have a quick look at the product table, you can find all kinds of descriptions that characterize a product. And one of them is a Boolean condition that shows if a color is blue. As you can see, it's a calculated column which says the color name is equal to blue. And its conditions are false and true. So let's make our first measure here. So the sales amount measure exists and we are going to make an uh, adjustment to this to only make sure that we calculate the blue products. So we can have the sales amount is blue and we're going to use calculate here. And calculate allows you to use, first of all, an expression, which is the calculation you will make. And in our case, it's sales amount. So nothing spectacular here yet. If we would only do this, calculate sales amount, and put it into the, the, let's see, into the table. We still got to change the formatting to whole numbers. Then as you can see, nothing has happened and it's just calculating your sales amount. So nothing actually changes and this is not very useful. Still, it's good to know that calculate by default does this. Now we get to the interesting part. If you write a comma after the first argument, you can see that calculate actually has filter conditions. So you write either a single filter or multiple filter conditions. And these filters, they are making sure that there is a context that's get modified by it. What do I mean by this? Let's make our first filter. So we could say that that is blue. We right now look at the product table with the color is blue, column name. If we equal this to true, and we press enter, now what's happening is calculate is changing the evaluation context in which this calculation is done. And this means that first, we're gonna look at the different lines that we have. For example, you can have the line blue. Then what's happening is it before the calculation of the sales amount is done, these filter conditions are applied. And then the result of this, only the rows that meet this condition will be summed up for the expression, which is the sales amount. So in this case, we only see 928. Now, you might think that this condition could be equal to the following. I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna write a separate measure. And instead of using the color is blue column, there is another column that is called color name. And instead of showing like true or false, it has the actual color names. We could, for example, write the color name actually has to be blue. Now think of this for a, a short second. What value do you expect to be returned here? When we tell it to be color equals blue. Well, you might first of all think that the result is gonna be equal because it looks like a very similar condition. So we can take this away and the separate measure is called sales amount blue. Let's see what happens. We can select the table, enter the measure, and I will still format this to a whole number just like the other one. Okay, so very similar measure. Like we, we had dim color name is blue, and over here we had the color is blue, but it's a very different result. Why is that? So let me help you here. If we take a look at this measure here, 
this is the short syntax. So uh, the Dex engine uh, makes it easy for us to write our measures and to create filters. So I could write, I'm going to write a variable short syntax equals the below. But there is also a longer syntax. And the longer syntax looks as follows. We have a longer syntax. And what it actually means is that it has a filter on all the column names. And after removing all the filters on the column names, it returns the column name blue. Close brackets. Now, if we take a quick look at this, what you'll find is that simply that filtering condition, this top one here, is uh, the short syntax for the longer syntax that we have. <clears throat> the longer syntax that we have right here. So this part here is identical. That's good to know. Now, uh, if we have a short, if, if you let your thoughts go on this for a second, it's okay to write the shorter syntax. It's built into the language to make things easier for us. But what's important to know is that the longer syntax makes it that um, it can have an effect that you did not expect, especially if you don't know exactly how Calculate works. But let's see why the result is different then. So these are the different syntaxes that we have. Okay, and as a result, I can leave this here. I'm going to leave the longer syntax here for a second so you can see that it has a, this identical result. So the column right here is the long syntax. So we're talking about this column here. And what the syntax is actually doing is for each of the lines, it first looks at the filter context in the table. Now the filters happening here are the color is being filtered first. So if we take a look at the, at the gold line here, then right here, the first thing that happens is there is a filter on all the products that is gold. Okay, fair enough. But why is it not showing the gold colors then? And it's showing blue instead. Well, because of the way that we write this, what's happening is first the filter comes on gold and in our DEX expression, before the expression is evaluated, the filter changes the context. It removes all the filters on the color name and then it replaces all these by the color blue. That is the reason why um, this number is repeated everywhere. And we only see it for this measure right here because that measure is filtering the same column as the column right here, the color number. Whereas the other measure that was here, this other measure actually filtered a different column. So when you say something has to be the color azure, and also has to be equal to blue, then of course no result will be returned. So that's why this happens. Okay, well, what could we instead do if this is not the result that we want? So let's go back to the short syntax. So within this short syntax that says the color is blue. So this result is still the same here for the last column, but what you could do instead for this filter, if you don't want it to override anything, is you could write it keep filters. And by writing keep filters, it will apply the filter in your condition, but also respect all the other filters in the model. So for the line that says black here, it will definitely say that this whole line needs to be black but it also needs to be equal to blue, just like it says in our formula here. And because of that, we have no result for the line that's black. But of course, for the line that's blue, it respects the filters. Okay. So let's put this back for a second. The filter condition that we have here in Calculate looks like a Boolean condition, which is true or false. But in the background of DAX, each of the filter conditions that you do actually returns a table. So by saying that the dim product color name needs to be equal to blue, 
we actually return this table here. And if we filter here on the color blue, then this entire table here is returned with just a color blue. And this table by itself then filters our data model. That's, a, that's a, a thing that's good to remember. So these are not real Boolean conditions, but the engine sees it as if you're filtering a table. So what happens if I wanna add another filter? For example, instead of only having a color name, I also wanna have a class name. So if we go back here, we can copy the measure. This measure we will copy and paste back to a new measure. And we will see that we will have a channel that's called regular. Now, since we had an update recently for Power BI, I think it was the April 2021. Since then, Microsoft allows it to include two different conditions from the same table in the short syntax. So this condition here can be expanded by including the ampersands and saying that we want our channel, the channel name to be equal to regular. Okay. Let's see how that calculates. Ah, I took the wrong, uh, I took the wrong table here. So we want our dim product table and then the channel uh, color is blue, product label, product name. It's the class name. It's not a channel name, but it's the class name. The class name needs to be equal to a regular. And then we can add this to our table as well. And make sure it's formatted as a whole number. Now, the conditions we're doing here are more restrictive than the previous one, because in our current measure, we're not only looking at things need to be equal to blue, but we're also mentioning that the class needs to be the regular class. As you can see, Power BI now accepts this condition. There is a, a table here, which is dim product, and this uh, table name here is also dim product. So the filters and the columns are both from the same table. And since the latest updates, this is a syntax that works. And this exact syntax is again short for something else. So we have a short syntax and we have a long syntax. And the longer syntax again starts with a filter condition that removes all of the filters from both the color name but also the class name. And then after removing those filters, it will return uh, the color blue and the channel, the class name regular. So if I would return my longer syntax, let's see, so we close our brackets. So instead of returning the short syntax and now return the long syntax, you find that the numbers are still the same. So just for a second, if we take a look at this, then the longer syntax is uh, ex the expanded version of this part. So line 10 until 12 is the longer part. Okay. So if you have the latest updates, feel free to use this expression as long as you understand what's happening with the longer syntax. The longer syntax takes away all the filters and all the all the filters that are done on these column names and replaces them by the conditions that we entered here. Okay. But what happens if we want to have multiple conditions but on different tables? If we only focus on the on the long syntax. And we would for example say we want to see blue for a month 6. Uh, let's see. I think I want to want to have the short syntax anyway. Okay. So the color can remain the same. So the color is blue. And now let's say that we want to apply the. We go to our date table, and within our date table there is a month number, 
which is equal to six. And we take away the rest. So this is the final expression I'll write down as a first attempt. And the only difference is now that we have columns that come from two different tables. And the error message that we're getting is that we have columns from multiple tables. And in, your, in the same filter condition, you can only provide a single table. And when you think about this, that's also something that's logical to comprehend because each of the filters that you do is a table filter. And it wouldn't know exactly what to return as a table filter if you get your filters from different tables within the same condition. So how can you solve this? Well, instead of having these in the same condition, you could also separate those and have these on a separate line. And then all of a sudden, you'll find that the conditions are accepted. And these conditions, you can, you can stack those conditions on top of each other. So for each of the filters that you do, it means that they are added to the filters in an end condition. So now we will only see all the product sales for everything month six, and that is blue. In the same way, we could have actually wrote down that we want to see there class is regular. You'll find that it still gives you the right result, but I'd recommend just putting uh, all the, the, the different products, uh, the different columns from the product table. You can put those filters in the same condition. Just make separate ones if you filter from separate tables. So our filter here was more month, uh, the month equals six. Now that's a short introduction to how you can apply your filters in Calculate. To get a deeper understanding in how this works, you've got to learn a little bit more about evaluation context, which is together, which is uh, consists of the uh, filter context and the row context. And I'm going to be sharing a more in-depth video on this very soon. So look out for that and let me know in the comments what you're struggling with in the calculus function. I hope this added value for you. If it did, smash that like button. I'm going to release more videos soon and I'll see you for the next one. Okay, thanks for watching.